What's going on guys? Mike Tierney here from Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about RV setup and tear down. So when it comes to RVing, you're going to come to your, you know, the site that you're going to, uh, basically, whether it's an RV park uh, where they have, uh, you know, specific sites, maybe they've got a groom pad or a concrete pad. It all depends on the different uh, sites that are out there. Um, you, you know, you just want to make sure that you're, you're, you're prepped and ready and have the materials there for setting up. So when it comes to the, the setup, um, you're going to typically prep the area. So whether you want to have a mat underneath or, you know, uh, a tarp, that's entirely up to you. Um, typically, I just use the pad that, uh, that our seasonal site's on. Um, what you want to do is have the equipment to help prevent any kind of rolling of the trailer or any kind of movement. So we want to limit the bounce in the trailer once you're in the trailer and you're settled. You know, you can get some bounce if you're not leveling it properly. Um, tilting, doors don't open properly or they don't stay, stay uh, closed properly. Um, you can get twisting in your RV. All different kinds of things with improper setup. So we want to make sure that that's done first. So if you're at a regular site that you're going to pull in, a paid site where you're going to uh, RV, uh, typically that's fairly flat. So the, some of the things that you might want to consider is um, preventing your trailer from moving. So there's lots of different uh, products out there. Uh, we want to make sure that we block the wheels. So in the case of this product, um, it's basically a flat plastic uh, unit with some bumps. You'd set these out. Um, you'd help some, someone would help you line up your trailer uh, axles and tires and you'd back into the middle piece here. So this would help prevent your trailer from rocking back and forth. These are just one type of product to prevent that. You can also use wheel chocks. So wheel chocks are also used uh, to help prevent um, some, sometimes there are, you know, individuals like this one. Sometimes they actually have two. Uh, some of them actually may have a tensioner, so you can actually put it in between two um, trailer axles and it just pushes pressure onto the wheels to help prevent movement. So um, wheel chocks, if you don't, uh, you know, have this uh, available, uh, a couple of pieces of firewood and, uh, you know, as long as you block the wheels so that it helps that front back motion uh, movement, especially if you're on slightly uneven ground. Once you've kind of got that ready, now you need to level your trailer. So leveling the trailer comes in a variety of ways depending on your type of trailer. So it may have scissor jacks already bolted on. Typically there's uh, one on each end of the trailer, fronts and backs. Um, it may be a power um, um, stabilizer. All depends on your model of trailer, um, but definitely the you know the the, the most low cost way are uh, leveling jacks in a scissor form, um, like the one in front of me. Um, these are typically mounted to the frame on each corner, and uh, by using a little uh, handle, you can crank that up and down. And uh, this is basically to stabilize your trailer. You don't want to use these to level it out. Okay, so leveling it by cranking your, um, your, your scissor jacks can actually bend the jacks. You want to basically get the trailer level as possible and then just use the jacks to, to lower down to basically stop any kind of rocking motion. You don't actually use these to you know, crank up and down the heavy weights of your trailer. That, that will um, bend these and cause them to buckle. Um, so you just want to, you know, get your trailer leveled and then crank these down and then basically you'll have a stabilizing pad for them to sit on. Um, these don't typically all crank all the way down to the ground. So you would need a platform, uh, you know, a stump or um, you can get pads that, uh, you know, go underneath. Some guys make them out of two by fours or two by sixes and just build them up so that you're not fully extending this out. Um, that can also cause a little bit too much rocking and create the an unbalance on the trailer. The other option you also have too is uh, stabilizer jacks that are mounted. They will swing down. Um, the, some models will have further, shorter extensions. Uh, there's little uh, positive locks here that you can uh, just lift up and adjust according to the 
height, the level that you want your trailer to be stabilized. And they're usually sitting at angles. So they've got rubber pads on them. Uh, it helps prevent any kind of slipping, especially if it's on concrete or anything like that. Usually they come in sets. Now, once you've kind of got your, your trailer level, well, how do you really tell that it's level? So there's lots of different ways to do this. You can use a level if you want. Uh, typically, you're going to start front to back level, and then you're going to do side to side level. So once you've got your front tongue and your back leveled out, you're going to now try to level out the side to side. Uh, to aid in that, we have different um, uh, stick on levels. So the levels have a little uh, sight glass, just like your level, uh, you know, a carpenter level would have. And uh, if you put these on each corner, this will actually indicate whether you're level in one spot or the other, or you need to do a little bit of adjustments. Now they don't last forever. Um, if they're in direct sunlight all the time, uh, they do crack, the plastic you know, will crack, and also the, the glass inside will start to, or the green in the glass will start to uh, kind of uh, not be as, as, as green, it'll start to fade out. So um, you, know, you can replace these. Uh, you shouldn't have to replace them every year, but uh, you know, every few years. You also can get them that have uh, indicator uh, degree marks. So it'll have a zero, that means that you're perfect, and then they'll kind of inch out each way. Um, there's lots of different models like this on the market, and they're cheap, and you know what, they aid in you know, all leveling. Once you've got that trailer leveled, parked, chalked up, set, it's a good idea to have your wheels covered. So the tires should be covered. And, um, you know, especially if you've got sun exposure on one side versus the other, I would definitely have a full set of uh, trailer covers. Um, if you're only in the, uh, you know, the, the RV spot for a day or so, not a big deal. But if it's something like a seasonal trailer that you might only pull out um, once a year, or if you're doing extended stays, I would really suggest that you cover the wheels, uh, the tires. Uh, it prevents any kind of um, tire bleaching, cracks on the outside of the tires. It just aids in maintaining your tires that much longer and uh, it helps prevent any of that cracking on the sidewalls. So tire covers, really uh, inexpensive. Uh, you can get them in a variety of different sizes for that tire that you have. Um, typically they'll have a range and uh, they have little bungees that just fish through the back side of the tire. You just clip them together. It takes next to no time to uh, install these and it is a great, uh, um, you know, once you've set up and you're ready to go and you won't have to worry about them until you, till you're, you know, ready to leave. There's also blocks that have, um, they're like Lego blocks, they're stacking blocks. Um, they basically can um, add height so that if you're trying to level out your trailer, they're plastic, typically they're yellow, and um, you can add or subtract depending on which way your axle is on level. So you can just back onto them, you can t add more or less. They're, uh, they're basically like building blocks and uh, they can also help um, you know, level your trailer out if you are on uneven ground. And that typically happens when you're just boondocking it. You're going somewhere where it's maybe not an actual you know, RV site or it's a rough and go type RV um, you know, uh, campground and maybe it's a little bit more muddy or you know, the gravel is in, uh, not even. That's where you kind of really need all of the, uh, the, the, the support blocks to help you level out. Next, we're going to talk about venting. So uh, most trailers will have uh, one, two, three, four, depending on the size of your trailer, different vents. Um, basically, standard vent lids are all the same. They're uh, mostly 14 by 14, and this just helps vent out your trailer, whether you're, uh, you know, typically when you're, you know, stationary, you're obviously not going to travel with the vents up. Uh, the wind can, you know, obviously tear these apart. Um, they do wear out over time. Uh, the sun is directly beaming on these vent lids. Uh, they basically get really brittle, and they do crack. Now, if they crack, now your inside of your trailer is exposed through the venting screen and you can start to get possibly moisture, bugs, whatever it is that's coming down from the top of the trailer 
into uh, your RV. So you want to make sure that your vent lids are in good working shape. They're not cracked. Um, as they start to wear, even just the wind, um, the, the you know, hail obviously can have a, a major issue on these plastic uh, components. So you want to just inspect your lids at least one or two times a year. You just have to get up on the roof of your, uh, your trailer. Sometimes you have a, a built-in ladder or you'll just have to be careful and, and use a, a ladder to get up on the, uh, on the trailer. And uh, inspect the lids. Make sure that there's no you know, cracks through you know, here's where quite often they'll crack. Um, they can crack along where the, the mounting bracket would be because that's more secure than the rest of it and if they flap. Um, basically on the inside of the vent lid, you're gonna have a bracket. And uh, depending on your model of trailer or model of uh, vent lid, so the, 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 the supplier of that vent lid, um, they come in different designs on the bracket. They're all basically 14 by 14. But the bracket itself um, may have slightly different uh, mounting options. Um, so make sure that when you're going to purchase a, a vent lid or a replacement lid, you kind of, you know, either have the old one that uh, you've taken a picture of or brought in um, so that you can actually see what the bracket looks like and if that's actually going to work for you. Uh, typically, when you're installing these, they, uh, you've, had a, you've got to take the, the, the housing from the inside of the trailer. There's a few screws. You have to remove that. You have to remove the wind mechanism and then you got to get back up onto the trailer and then remove the lid and then uh, feed the new lid in the slide and then you typically have to crimp down these ends um, and what that'll do is lock that in place so it doesn't slide um, off the the track then you're going to have to insert your wind on the the metal um, uh, slide and then reinstall the bezel from uh, inside your trailer so um, uh, it only takes maybe 10, 15 minutes as long as you've got the tools to do it and uh, um, you know, you've got a, a lid which will last quite a long time depending on the environment you are putting your RV through. Now, you don't obviously want to travel with the vents up and uh, sometimes we want to air out our, our RV um, you know, in, when it's really hot out, um, you know, it could be humid. We do want to have the RV maybe uh, you know, some fresh air coming in. Now to travel with these up, uh, they will just destroy themselves. You do have another option. Um, it's an accessory that we do carry at Princess Auto. Um, it's a vent, li vent li lid cover. And uh, basically it goes over top of your vent lid on the RV. The beauty about these is if this is the front of our trailer this way, air is gonna pass over we can actually have the lid up and vent while we're traveling. You're gonna have a, a, a screen on the front to help for aerating out your, your RV, but the travel does not um, affect the lid. So the lid can be up and uh, you can vent your, your, your RV or trailer um, as you travel. One caution though, is you travel gravel roads, anything like that that has you know, dust flying up, that could get sucked in because of just you know air circulation coming over the uh, from the tow vehicle over, and um, you may have some dust uh, you know build up in your trailer. So I would suggest that if you're traveling on you know heavy gravel roads or dirt roads that have a lot of dust, just close your vents anyways, just so that you don't have a whole lot of cleanup once you uh, start RVing. They're really simple on how they are mounted. There's, uh, there's a uh, installation kit that you get. Um, basically all they are are angle brackets. You don't have to drill into the top of your RV on the bezel or the frame of your vent lid. You will have a, um, a flange that sticks out. It's metal. All you need is a drill bit, um, the appropriate drill size, and uh, there's some screws. You just have to mark where that's gonna line up and uh, basically you bolt, uh, bolt everything together on that. So you don't actually have to drill into the top of your RV. It's, uh, you don't have to worry about siliconing any of that um, because you're not actually tapping in to uh, create any kind of water issues. So they're really, really common. Uh, more and more RVs uh, might be coming with them um, as a, you know, an option, but definitely it's something that uh, I would suggest uh, having that way if it's raining out and you can still vent out your your trailer it's a great option to have uh, without having to you know sacrifice some water coming inside
Next, we're going to talk about maintenance and products that you may need to replace throughout owning your RV or the RV season. So first off, we're going to talk about um, some of the safety side of things. So safety is utmost. We are using electrical power in some cases. We are also using propane. Now propane is usually used when you're not connected directly to a power source. So propane, many of the um, products within your RV uh, require propane to operate. So possibly your, you know, your hot water tank, your heater, and some air conditionings run on the, on the propane system, as well as your cook stove. So you've got propane throughout your system. Now the problem with propane is it's a silent killer. So many times people go RVing, they don't inspect their systems properly or they have a malfunction and uh, they may have a propane leak um, or when you're burning propane, you create carbon monoxide. So you have to have the safety things in working order and it's something you wanna check um, at least once or twice a year to make sure that they're actually operating properly or they're in good condition. So first off, always have a good fire extinguisher handy. Now your RV may have come with a, a fire extinguisher. Um, usually they're placed closest to the door um, or close to a kitchen area. Uh, make sure that it's rated for you know, RV use, kitchen use, uh, for greases, that kind of stuff. And uh, just check the dial on it. Just make sure that they, um, they are um, you know, still rated for good. So there's a, you know, an indicator on there. It will tell you you know, no good or good, and uh, usually there's a date stamp on them. So it's a great habit to get into that at the beginning of the season, maybe at the end of the season, maybe you've left your fire extinguisher in and it freezes big time. Um, maybe just have a look at them, make sure that they are going to work when you need them because RVs are not built, um, you know, they're built with a lot of stuff that's flammable and it wouldn't take very long uh, to become in trouble if you're thinking your fire extinguisher is working and it's not. So fire extinguisher is super important. Um, I have at least two, one in the bedroom that I keep because if I'm sleeping and something you know uh, happens while we're getting up, I wanna be able to get out of the RV as much as possible or as quickly as possible. To aid in the carbon monoxide side or a fire uh, alarm, um, I'd get a dual, uh, basically a carbon monoxide and fire uh, rated uh, monitoring system. Um, that way, you know, you're covering both bases. Some are, you know, rated for that 10 year mark. Some of them, um, you know, plug in. Some of them are battery operated. Uh, basically, you want to make sure that they're in good working order. Um, test them if they have a test system and make sure that um, you, you have one. Uh, you should not be RVing unless you have a uh, fire alarm or a, um, a carbon monoxide detector. And uh, you know, there, there's lots of different models out there that you can purchase for your, uh, for your RV. When it comes to getting into your stairs, so the stairs typically will roll out or, or um, you know, pull out. Um, some are powered, some are manual. Um, sometimes they get a little slippery. There are usually you know, non-slip uh, pads on them, but over time those wear out. Or if you're uh, you know, in an area that has a lot of um, you know, gravel or sand, you wanna try to prevent a lot of that uh, coming into the trailer. Um, great option is RV step rugs. So um, each kit has an R, uh, one rug in it. Uh, basically, you can just uh, put it over top of your step uh, fold it underneath. Um, some will just use a twist tie, some have a button mount. It all depends on the type that you're looking at. But this is a great way to clean your feet off before you get into your trailer, uh, whether you're bare feet and you're on metal or whether you're bringing in uh, gravel or sand, they can easily be vacuumed off or swept off. So um, I would suggest always having um, at least one. You don't have to have them on all stairs, but typically two or three stairs that get into your trailer. Um, they're a great option uh, to, to maintain less dirt in your trailer. Other products that you may need to replace, um, we have locks. So lots of RVs have different locks. Maybe you've lost the keys, broken the keys. Um, it just depends on how rough or how uh, tough your, you know, your components are on your trailer. Uh, we carry lots of different um, applications to replace um, locks. So some have uh, just a twist or a one-arm lock. Some of them have um, kind of a dual 
uh, they'll be keyed and um, you know it's uh, it's important to lock up your uh, your cubbies um, you know there's also you know front door trailer locks uh, but in this case this is a, a great option for uh, for people that are just replacing locks on their cubbies so lots of different models of these are available when it gets into your your bumper system so uh, the bumpers uh, typically are where you can house uh, most RVs your um, your sewer hose so when it comes to uh, making sure that that doesn't slide out or it you know it's locked in um, bumper um, inserts on each end of the trailer um, will allow you to keep all of that uh, nastiness out of your trailer uh, cubbies so you uh, you basically just pop these in and out um, these specific models I'll hold them up so you can see the light shining through they have venting so it helps uh, vent out um, any maybe the, the, the nasty smells um, that you might uh, get from your, your sewer hose. Um, some other models are completely plugged uh, and uh, those are just options. So they just pop in on the end of your trailers. When it comes to your, uh, um, your awning maintenance, so not all RVs have awnings. Some have powered awnings, some have manual rollout awnings. Um, awnings are, are great for the, the you know, shade, keeping the rain off if you're uh, wanting to still sit outside. Uh, but being exposed to the environments, um, they do, most of them are a vinyl um, with a, a webbing, cotton or, or polyester webbing. Um, the vinyl does start to you know, degrade over time. Um, it may start to get a little bit of mold because they are rolled up. Um, there are cleaners, so it helps uh, remove um, you know, dirt. It helps remove uh, the mold uh, that can you know, start to form um, by washing. Um, you can add it to a power washer if you wanted to, obviously of a low pressure. And if you have a wand that you can scrub down with, um, this is a great uh, material and it helps prevent the molding from forming, um, you know, doing this two or three times, depending on where you are. If you're in the desert, well, that, uh, you know, you might not get the amount of moisture that, uh, you know, if you are in, uh, you know, a fairly humid area or, or moist area. So cleaning the awning, um, you know, is a, a major maintenance, um, you know, that you need to do once or twice a year uh, just to prevent, uh, you know, degradation of your, of your awning because they are not cheap to replace. You can also get um, add-ons to the awning itself. Um, in this case, this is a, uh, an RV gutter extension. So um, these are mounted to the uh, the solid end of your, your, you know, your gutter and uh, basically it's got kind of sheds the water away from coming straight down, dripping straight down. So it helps remove water away from the awning. So again, another uh, great option to have if you want to trick out your awning. Now as your awning and your RV gets a little older, um, you know, wind is a big factor. Um, if, you're, if you're not careful, the awning can tear. Um, age also starts to uh, wear out the awning. Um, we do have uh, um, awning tape. So basically it's repair tape um, that reinforces any maybe stitching that's coming loose. Maybe you've got, uh, you know, a side that's rubbed on, uh, you know, maybe a tree had uh, kind of rubbed on the side of it to help prevent any further tear or, uh, or degradation of the, uh, of the awning material itself. Um, you know, we do carry the tape that you can, um, you know, Temporarily, it's not an end-all to be-all, but it will help you uh, prolong that life um, a little bit more before you may need to replace the, uh, the awning um, itself. Other maintenance that can be done, whether it's, you know, uh, you know throughout the year or throughout the season or before you, uh, you, you, know, you pull the RV out for the first time or when you're storing it, um, we've got a couple of other products. Um, this is a black streak remover, so uh, basically it comes in a spray form. Um, sometimes RVs, depending on uh, the, the, the build of the RV, um, whether you've got a fiberglass shell or an aluminum sided type uh, shell, um, crevices and cracks under windows, uh, little black stains tend to, to, to form. And that's basically like, you know, the beginning stages of mold or excess dirt dripping down. Um, Basically, uh, black stain remover works really well. Um, you can spray that down. It basically removes that pretty much without any heavy scrubbing. 
um, and it's a pretty non-abrasive to the materials that you're going to be adding it to. So uh, black stain remover, um, it's great for general maintenance on your, on your outside of your RV. You can change the on off with the spray and uh, it, it, it's a great product to use. Lastly, we're going to talk about the slide out. Now, what is a slide out? Well, if you don't have an RV that doesn't have a slide out, you really may not need this product. But if you have a slide out that comes out from the RV to extend your room, so some RVs have one, some have three, up to four. Um, it all depends on the size of your trailer. And uh, the, the slide out um, has mechanisms underneath that come in a few different forms. You may have a hydraulic slide out, you may have a hand crank slide out, um, and you may have a power slide out. Um, they usually use, a power slide out usually uses a, um, a rack and pinion, so it has a, a gear that it mates to an electric motor that underneath your trailer will have a gear that will move out as you extend your slide out. Now, because that's all underneath your trailer, you wanna make sure that you, know, you lubricate that uh, you know, frequently. Um, if you are traveling all the time, if you're in a seasonal um, application where you're only doing it once or twice, maybe a year, um, you know, you can do this at the beginning of the year and then maybe at the end of the year when you're storing it. Um, but this, uh, this is a basically a silicone lube that you can get underneath your trailer, spray the, the gearing, spray the mechanisms. Um, it'll prevent, uh, you know, debris, binding. Um, it's, it's a great uh, product. Um, and uh, I would always suggest having a can of this. Um, it's, it's, uh, it'll make your slide out a lot easier and, um, and, and retract it. Uh, road debris can cause all kinds of little uh, stones inside the gearing, and this will help flush that out and also lubricate that system. So slide out's really good um, uh, spray for that. So this is a silicone base. And finally, we're going to get to the winterizing or year-end storage. So there's a lot of products out there that can help you, you know, get through your, you know, your storage. Um, depending on your location, uh, winters come, you know, fairly early here where we are. And uh, we want to make sure that um, we winterize our RVs properly so that we don't have any issues come throughout the winter as well as into the spring for the, the spring setup. So first product I'll kind of go through is the um, basically the quick connect blowout plug. So what this does is it um, attaches to um, a air compressor. So you can attach a quick coupler to the one end of the, uh, the, the fitting and you'll thread this into your uh, typically your water system. And there's kind of two ways you can clear out your water. In this case, we're going to use air. Where you have to be careful of is your air pressure. So if your compressor is set at 90 or, or higher in PSI, um, you could run into some issues by blowing your water lines because they're not typically designed to handle that high pressure. So you need to have a regulator on your compressor. Bring down that pressure to 20, 30 PSI at the most. And connect your airline, blow out the water out of all of your systems. So that's one way to clear out your water. You'll want to disconnect all of the, uh, the plugs that may be on your low spots on your, your sink or your taps. You may want to take out your water heater plug. That way all the water can be drained out by using air. Another way to do that is by filling the system with RV antifreeze. So RV antifreeze, um, is a non-toxic type antifreeze. Um, you can run that, it's safe for water systems. Um, basically, you would use your 12 volt system that's gonna be on board your pump um, to pump through that water through your, your entire water system except your hot water tank. What you wanna do is at your hot water tank, you turn off the valves so that no water goes through your hot water tank or any RV antifreeze. Um, you just open up the plug on your hot water tank and that just leave that out. Then you can go and put that plug back in in the spring and then that will be protecting your hot water tank from any kind of foreign material like RV antifreeze. So by running RV antifreeze through your entire system, you basically open up all your taps, have it drain out. You'll start to see the coloration change from you know, clear water 
to a colored antifreeze and um, just run it for a few minutes. Allow that to kind of just remove any of the water that might be in there. Open up your shower, open up your bathroom faucets or your sink faucets and uh, even your outdoor shower if you have one. You wanna make sure that that all is flushed through. That way you run no risk of water freezing and expanding and blowing lines in your RV. Um, to add RV, basically you can use um, uh, a filler into your fresh water holding tank. Um, it's the easiest way. And then you can use your 12 volt pump to pump that through. And then um, if you wanna leave that RV in your fresh water, cause you're not gonna use it Larger systems need, you know, gallons, 5, 10, 15 gallons of, of RV in some cases um, to flush that out properly. So some people prefer the air system. Some people prefer the, the RVM antifreeze. One is no better than the other. It's just done slightly different. Now, as you put your, you know, your RV away, obviously you're going to be taking out as much of it as you can. You don't obviously want to leave any foods or perishables inside. Um, keep your fridge kind of slightly open. Some fridges come with a little plate that you can stick in the door to keep, uh, keep um, the, the door open slightly so that you don't create mold buildup or you know, humidity in your fridge. But you also can use um, um, absorbent. So uh, you know, basically it's like dehydration or a dehumidifier kit. Uh, it comes in a plastic, in this case, a plastic container. There's a foil lid once you open it up. You can put this in your RV for kind of two things. You can use it for your winterizing. So typically if you're in a maybe slightly humid or maybe you've got the trailer in a, a shed or garage um, and it's not in the direct, you know, pure winter, um, you can build up some humidity inside. You don't want that building up. So you can install, just put this inside and it will capture any water buildup that would, uh, you know, possibly form. You can also use this um, throughout the season, if you tend to run your air conditioner a lot, um, there's a lot of you know, uh, humid air that may build up. Um, this is a great, uh, great kit to have throughout the season, but definitely if you want to prevent any kind of moisture buildup or help reduce the amount of moisture buildup in your storaging, winterizing, um, you know, maintenance-free kind of stuff, you want one of these. Um, they're a great, uh, great tool. And basically it's plastic, so you can just dump it out and uh, replace as needed. Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. See you next time.